Hey guys, today I'm going to be covering Sequitor, which is a newer application you can use if you want to use, do any kind of uh, photo stacking, whether that's the Andromeda Galaxy, the Orion Nebula, or even wide angle photos. So let's say you have a 14 millimeter lens and you want to stack multiple photos to reduce noise. This is the perfect application because even Photoshop uh, can't do that. The, the fact that there's a lot of distortion with wide angle lenses among some other factors, Photoshop just fails to align it properly. But using uh, Sequitor, we can actually do that. So it's a really powerful free tool you can get. And uh, this is the website right here. Just a quick note, this the author is uh, Chinese, I believe. So some of the wording is kind of funny, but it's still very easy to follow along with. And the application runs much better than Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, if you've used Deep Sky Stacker before, you're aware that it's a 32-bit application and it constantly uh, runs out of memory if you have any other kind of applications open. But Sequitor, I've used it to process probably six different examples at this point, and uh, they all are done within 20 seconds. So it works extremely fast and it's very stable. Here we have the interface itself, and uh, the first thing you want to look at is these uh, check boxes up here. We've got base image, star images, noise images, vignetting, and output. So your base image, you really don't need to worry about that. What I've been doing is just double clicking on star images. And then from here, you can either choose your raw files. So you can see I have the, the NEF files here for my D750. But I would recommend doing your initial edits and then saving those as TIFF files and using the TIFF files for this process. It's going to look a lot cleaner and it's going to work better. Um, but anyway, once you have them, you just select them all. They'll load up into the program here and you'll see we have the green dots, which means we're good to go for that. The noise image, if you've done any kind of astrophotography before, you've probably heard of dark frames. Uh, same thing here. If you're not familiar with the concept of a dark frame yet, essentially, as soon as you take this normal photo here, you'd put the lens cap on and take the exact same photo or even two or three of the, that photo, if not more. And that's going to map out things like hot pixels in the photo, as well as some kind of a amp glow and things like that. They're not necessary, but they can help. Uh, we also have vignetting images, also called flat fields in astrophotography. And these are used to map out the vignette. And this was taken with a Rokinon 14 millimeter, which you can see has some pretty heavy vignette. To take a vignetting image, as it's called here, what you'd want to do is either put a shirt over your lens and make sure it's tight and photograph a bright sunny sky and that would map out the vignette or if you had a brightly lit wall in your house you can take a photo of that and that would remove the vignette but frankly if you've got camera raw or Lightroom you can do that in post processing so for example I'm gonna load up one of my raw files in uh, Adobe Camera Raw and if you go to the lens correction tab most lenses have a profile correction and you just click that and it's going to fix the vignette automatically. In this case, this is the Rokinon, it doesn't have that automatic correction. So what I've done is just manually come in here and you can see that's what it looked like before. I just increased the vignette to remove it anyway and I had to change the midpoint so it did that. So you don't have to take the flat frames, you can just do it here in post-processing and get the same effect really. Uh, but once you have all your final photos saved as TIFFs, We'll bring these back into Sequitur like we just did. Next you want to, uh, you have your output here. We'll double click on that and this is where we're going to name our file. So I'm going to save this as test2. And now I have a green check mark. We're good to go there. Then this is where we can really choose all the different settings. So first thing we have the align stars. But you'll notice I have a foreground here. This is a 14 millimeter photo. So what I want to do is choose freeze ground and we have a couple different options here. We can do selective which will try and remove aircrafts and things like that but you really shouldn't need to worry about that and then you can also do align only I wouldn't recommend that but you'll notice here the sky region turned to red which means we have to do something so once you click on freeze ground instead of leaving it on accumulation we'll come to the sky region area Again, we have a couple different options. We can use boundary line, and this is where we'll just click and set that, which I guess if you're shooting at the ocean or something and you have a legit straight boundary, that'll work okay. 
I would recommend using the irregular mask though. This is going to be a much more intuitive process. And now we have this paintbrush, just like in Photoshop, and I can just highlight the sky. And it's a very quick, easy way to do this blending here. You want to make sure though you don't cover up any of the foreground or that will mess this up. If you need to change the size of the paintbrush, just use your mouse wheel to make it bigger or smaller. And just paint in as much of the sky as you can, but again, make sure you don't touch the foreground at all. And that's that's going to be good enough for what we're doing. And again, you'll notice this check mark turned blue now, so that's good. Auto brightness, you can double click to turn that on. In my experience, I would rather use the HDR option. That seems to work a little bit better. And this will make more sense once we do a deep sky image. I'm going to do that next. But for right now, I would just recommend turning on high dynamic range. The remove dynamic noises, what this will do is try and remove hot pixels in your photos and it works reasonably well. So if, if you go through this process and you actually know, have some hot pixels in the foreground, try doing it again with this option turned on, but for now I'm not going to worry about it. The reduced, reduced dis, uh, see again this is where the, the language is a little bit weird, but this is going to reduce the distortion of a wide angle lens. So if you had some extreme coma or star trails in the corners, you can enable this and it's going to try and fix it. Again, this is the Rokin on, so it doesn't have any distortion really to worry about. So I'm going to just turn that off. Uh, I haven't actually messed around with the light pollution yet because there's very little in this photo. And frankly, I don't have any really badly light polluted images to test. So we're going to have to skip that one for now. You can enhance the starlight, and why don't we just do that for now to test it out? Because I have noticed when I'm doing these tests, the stars do seem kind of dim. So we'll be able to see a before and after for that. And then finally, color space, you probably want to leave that sRGB. Once we have our green checkboxes up here, and everything looks good down here, we'll hit start. And this is where you can really see how well this application works. If this was Photoshop, for example, I'd probably be here for at least a minute if not two minutes waiting for this to align and inevitably it would fail so it's really amazing how well this application works but there we go that took less than 20 seconds probably and we're just about done there once it finishes you can hit close and then this one actually looks pretty dark compared to the other one so I'm gonna hit open and here's my image and they definitely brighten the stars compared to my previous example. Just to show you, oops. Uh, this was the, the previous attempt I did versus this one here. I'm just going to drag them both over so we can see them better. Um, I'm assuming this is the only thing I changed was the star brightness, which is, or rather, enhanced starlight. So it appears that caused the overall image to be darker. And if we really zoom in, honestly, I'd probably, looking at the two side by side, I'd probably leave that turned off. So again, I'd probably turn that off for future reference. Um, so let's look at my original image here. If I increase the brightness quite a bit so we can see what's going on, it looks pretty good. There's some purple amp glow down here. There's a hot pixel, but that's because I didn't do the noise reduction and uh, that's mainly from the Rokinon lens. Right here, uh, somewhere. here is a one single raw file and I had eight stacked together. So you'll notice it's pretty noisy and uh, there's the difference before and after basically. We're getting rid of all this noise by stacking eight photos together and it does a really nice job, especially here in the, the river, that looks a lot cleaner. And if you're able to take, you know, 10 to 20 images, you'd get even more noise reduction out of this technique. Now, let me, uh... If you look real close, you'll notice there's a very slight softening of the stars just because there was substantial motion between each photo. Uh, I was taking 15 second long photos with a one second pause in between and uh, the stars do move quite a bit over 16 seconds especially when you're doing eight photos total. So it's expected to lose a little bit of sharpness, but it doesn't look terrible by any stretch. Um, so that's an example of the wide angle. I was really impressed how well this works. 
as I've mentioned, it's impossible to do this as far as I know in Photoshop for a variety of reasons. In Deep Sky Stacker, uh, that probably wouldn't work there either. So as far as I know, Sequitor is the only free application that can do wide angle photos, which is really nice. Uh, so why don't we look at a Deep Sky example next? And that will kind of give us a better idea here. I've got my Orion photos here. And what I'm going to need to do is save these as TIFFs real quick. And then we'll edit those in Sequitor. All right, so I got my Orion Nebula photos edited real quick. So we can try those next. Again, I recommend saving your photos from RAW to TIFF. And that tends to work a little bit better for this whole process. Since this is a deep sky photo, things are going to be a little bit different from what we just saw. Um, I've loaded up my star images again. I need to specify the output. I'm just going to save this as test again. And then our composition. We don't have a foreground anymore, so all we have to worry about is choosing either accumulation or select best, best pixels. Uh, either one's probably going to work well enough. The problem with accumulated exposure, though, and this is what happened the first time is I'll just show you what's going to happen. If you leave it on accumulation and you leave off high dynamic range and auto brightness and we just hit start, what's going to happen is it's going to blow out the detail in the Orion Nebula and it's going to be impossible to get that back. And again, you can see how quick that took. That probably would have taken me five minutes at least, if not 10, 20 minutes to set up in Deep Sky Stacker. So much faster. Uh, but see how all that detail got blown out. So you need to remember when you're in Sequitor to specify either high dynamic range or auto brightness. When I did auto brightness, it actually made things worse. So in this particular case, I'm going to turn on high dynamic range and that will preserve the detail there. Also for accumulation, you can also do select best pixels. And this will probably help a little bit with uh, your noise reduction. Once I've done that, I don't need to worry about any of the other issues, so I'm going to change my output to test 2, test 1, and we'll process this again. And there we go. All the detail is retained, and I can do a quick curves layer adjustment to bring out that faint detail there. Do another curves layer to get rid of that uh, color gradient. And let me just stop those highlights from getting clipped. All right. So that looks pretty good there. There's a little bit of noise, but again, that's only because I had maybe eight exposures that were 10 seconds long. Um, so that worked very well, very quick, and it does a really good job. We can try one more example, and for that I'm going to do a 35 millimeter. If you've seen my noise reduction using median stacking in Photoshop, that's kind of my first tutorial I ever did. We basically did this whole process with the stacking and the noise reduction inside of uh, Photoshop, and that process did take quite a while. So let's see how much quicker we can do it here in Sequitor. So I'm going to reopen the application, select my star images, and you know what? This is another case where I did not edit the raw files first, and when I ran this through initially before making the video, there's still some ugly vignette, and if I would have just edited the raw files first, it would have looked a lot better. So I'm going to cut again, edit those real quick, and then we'll continue on. All right, so here I have the 35 millimeter exposure, and for this one, what I'm going to do again is do the freeze ground, just because there is a little bit of foreground there. And then I'll go to, again to the sky region, which turned red. I'm going to use my paintbrush here and just paint in the sky real quick, making sure not to touch the foreground at all. Now that I've done that, I want to make sure to turn on the high dynamic range. 
and I really don't need to worry about anything else in this photo. I just need to set my output again. And then we'll see how quick this takes. Now again, if you saw the original Photoshop tutorial of this, it worked pretty well because at a 35 millimeter to 50 millimeter, uh, you only have about eight to 10 seconds to take the photo. And it, by the time you take 20, there's enough, uh, the stars don't move enough and you're able to actually stack them inside of Photoshop. Again, if you try and do that with a 14 millimeter lens, it's just too wide and there's too much distortion and it will never work properly. Um, so it's nice that you can do wide angle telephoto, any kind of stacking inside of Sequitor. And again, this would have taken at least two to three times as long inside of Photoshop just to align the images. Uh, but I'm gonna cut this again and I'll see you inside of Photoshop. All right, so we have the finished Sequitor image loaded up into Photoshop. It looks pretty good. What I'm going to do first is just increase the brightness so we can see a little bit better. And also I brought over a single frame of the 20 that I just stacked. And what I'm going to do is just toggle between the two and you can see just how much noise was removed. So this is the original one single image. This is either six or eight seconds long at I think ISO 6400. But look at all the noise there versus the 20 photos stacked. It's really remarkable how much noise I got rid of. And overall, we're not losing very much sharpness and I'm not noticing any weird artifacts or anything so it seems to do a really nice job Secretor, of stacking photos not only very quickly but without any kind of weird artifacts and it's very straightforward to use I haven't really had any issues with it uh, compared to Deep Sky Stacker, Deep Sky Stacker seems ridiculously overcomplicated now having used this and even Photoshop, uh, you can use that for a whole lot of things, but the main reason I used Photoshop for a lot of my noise reduction and stacking was just because it was relatively straightforward. But now that Secretor is out, uh, this does everything that Photoshop can do much faster, easier, and it just makes your whole process a lot nicer to do. So that's just been a quick look at Secretor. Again, he's got a few quick start things and info on the website here so if there's something that I didn't quite cover well enough you might find the answer here but we did explain pretty much all there is to the application so if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment and uh, thanks to the commenter I can't remember your name that pointed this out to me the other day because uh, this is definitely going to speed up my workflow and uh, I'm glad we got to look at it today